John chapter 17, good to have you with us tonight, both here and online. Um, I've made an executive decision in the past hour, and that is I'm going to uh, stay home tomorrow. Um, went to the doctor. Um, this, yeah, yesterday morning, and um, he agreed with us. It's infected. My my incision here, right above my belly button, is infected, and I got an incision. Let's see, where is it? Right here, that's infected. This one's not too bad. Uh, this one's pretty bad, and um, so he cleaned out the infection and gave me an antibiotic yesterday and um, we keep it bandaged and everything like that but I've noticed um, every time I move today I could feel it like pulling apart and I'm like that's never going to heal if I keep ripping it open yeah and uh, and I want it to heal I want I want this gone I want it over with and I want the infection gone. The infection's not going to go away until the wound closes. And wound closes, uh, then I'll be okay. So I am not going to be here tomorrow. I'm going to just kind of take it easy. And uh, we'll see what difference a day or two makes. I appreciate everybody's forbearance with me. Uh, John chapter 17. And what we'll do is we'll read down... Uh, what I have on the screen is verses 6 through 8, but we'll start at uh, verse 1 and we'll read down through verse 8 and get the context of it. Remember, this is Christ's prayer as our high priest, as our mediator. Uh, he now is, and where where is his exact location? I don't think I've mentioned this. Where is Jesus' exact location at this time? If you were to put a dot on a map and say Jesus was here when he said these words, where would you put it? If you have, who has a map in there? Do we, they still put maps in Bibles? See if you have a map of Jerusalem. Okay. A, a map of Jerusalem. I got a map of Israel. I got a map of the, the whole occupied world. I've got a map of Paul's missionary journeys. Oh, looky here. I got a map of Jerusalem. City of Jerusalem in New Testament times. So if you look um, in your map of Jerusalem, look for the Garden of Gethsemane. Where is that? I see uh, Gordon's Calvary. Gordon's Calvary, by the way, if you want to write this down, I think Gordon's Calvary is the better place for Christ's crucifixion. There's disputed places. The Catholic Church is noted for getting everything wrong to begin with. And so, if you have a map and it says Golgotha tradition, traditional or traditional Golgotha, that means the Catholic Church put a great big Catholic Church there. They seized the property and they said, this is where we say it happened and we own this holy, sacred ground and everything that we do here is sacred. You must get it from us. But there is a better place called Gordon's Calvary. And it actually still to this day looks like the face of a skull is what it does. Um, let's see here. I'm looking for and, and if you'll just notice very quickly with me, if you're looking at your map of Jerusalem, notice that Gordon's Calvary is north of the temple sort of north north by north uh, west but it's outside the city and that's important because the scapegoat that they used that remember they took two goats one was known as the scapegoat and they put on him all of the transgressions upon his head and then they ushered him out of the city and let him go uh, without the camp. And uh, I think it's Hebrews that's telling us that let us go, let us follow him without the camp. In other words, let's, 
let's leave all this religion stuff back here and let's go to the cross. Amen. Let's go outside where everybody else is. Um, and I'm still not seeing on my map the Garden of Gethsemane. Who can, who can find it? Who knows where it is? If, do you, who has a map in their Bible, first of all, of Jerusalem? Yeah. Did you find the Garden of Gethsemane? I don't know where it is. Off map. Oh, okay, I see it. It's on uh, C4. C4, everybody. Sounds like we're... Yeah. I got a joke that goes with that, but I can't tell it now because it'll. It, the whole joke is ruined now if I tell it now. I have to wait till a time when it's totally unexpected. Okay? But anyway, Gethsemane is also outside. But he's, he is in the Garden of Gethsemane praying this prayer. All right? Not that it matters any. Uh, so, John chapter 17. Uh, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know there's that, what I was talking about Sunday night a little bit, the spirit of knowledge. That you can know who, who your Savior is. And actually, part of what I'm going to teach tonight falls in line with things that I was saying at the end of Sunday night's teaching. Dealing with languages. This is life eternal, verse 3, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I, for some reason, that always just strikes me. I love that verse. I do. Christ is longing here. He remembers the glory that he had with his father before there ever was a world. And he longs for that. He said, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Let me just throw something back in on verse 5. Those of you who are watching right now, if, if you died and went to heaven... And let's say that you were in heaven for a month. And God said to you, uh, I'm going to send you back down to the earth as a human. Uh, nobody's really going to know you, but I'm going to send you down there. And I've got some things I want you to do while you're down there. You're going to be back in a human body. You're going to feel everything that a human does. You're going to basically be a human. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep you down there for about 30 years, and then I'll bring you back up to heaven. How long do you think, after being in heaven for a month, how long do you think it would take for you, once you were back down on earth, in a, in a body, how long would it take you to say, oh, I miss heaven? Within minutes, seconds maybe. And to me, that's what Jesus, or at least part of what he's conveying. Because we, him and the Father shared the brightest glory that you and I cannot even conceive of. They shared that together. And then Jesus left that to be born uh, of a virgin, to know what it's like to cry, to know what it's like to feel pain, to know what it's like to starve, to know what it's like to have people that he loves die to know what it is to be beaten, uh, scorned, mocked. Everything that can be done to a human body, he knows what that feels like. And then he's hanging on the cross and then he knows what it's like to die. And he's like, get me out of this body. So it's not a sin, people, to say to God every now and then, God, I sure would like to go home. Nothing wrong with that. Paul said it, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. 
So while I'm here, I'm a benefit to the people that I love, the people that uh, love me. But if if it was up to me, I might I might choose to go. Now, now I've been through that situation where I believe God gave me a choice to die or to stay, and I chose to stay. I said I don't want to leave my wife and kids, and boom, that was my decision. Now that I've thought about it, <laughs> I've had about 20 years or so to think about it. You know, I don't know, but anyway, uh, that's the analogy I make with verse five. Now, verse six. Or verse 7 actually. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. There's that phrase again, all things. Whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Now verse 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me. I want you to look back at verse 6. This is what we're going to focus on tonight. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out, uh, out of this world or out of the world. Let's pray. Father, I ask your blessings now upon your word. Uh, Lord, help us, dear God, to share what we believe are simple things to us. But Father, there are people out there, maybe someone listening tonight, maybe somebody who's watching this days or years past this evening father that have been introduced to an alternative doctrine an alternative idea that most christians don't really know the true and real identifying name of god and that we have gone astray and father lord would you open our eyes open our ears open up our heart so that when you say verily verily we believe it because it is true and it is the word of God. So, Father, bless us tonight. We thank you, God, that you have made, uh, you've taken the eyes of the simple and you've opened them up and you've given them wisdom now that surpasses the wisdom of the most wise person in this world simply because they believe your word and what it says. So thank you tonight, Father. Bless your word, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Um, I don't have anything to draw on, and I'm not going to pull up anything on the screen. But just very quickly, if you could go through uh, pages of the Bible in your mind and give me some of the names of God that are in the Bible. Give me... Some of the names, God has these different names all throughout the scriptures. Give me some that you can bring to mind. Yes. Messiah. Okay. Huh? John? No, John's not God. John's not God. Okay. Okay. Do what? Jehovah? Yes. Light. God is... Light, okay. I am. There you go. Everett. Huh? Mighty, mighty God. Okay, I like that one. Yes, hope. The word of God. That's good. Yes, Jaden. The rock. Okay. Okay. You need some adults here. Adults, help me out here. Yes, Melissa. Uh, okay. Yeah, I guess that'll work. Rabbi. Yes. Okay. That's an attribute. Okay. A name. How about wonderful? Counselor, the mighty God, Courtney. Oh, I thought you. Had, I thought that was a hand raise. Everlasting Father, Lord of Lords, huh? Prince of Peace. OK. 
Okay, Hunter? What did he say? Jealous. jealous. In fact, no, seriously, that's his name, isn't it, John? Look it up. Capital J, whose name is Jealous. Okay, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Son of Man. These are, whether they are, whether they're pointed in the direction of Christ or they're pointed in the direction of God the Father, it doesn't matter. They're still God. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, the uh, Spirit of Christ, the Spirit uh, of Spirit of the Father, uh, the Spirit, capital S, just plain the Spirit. Yes? Yep. We'll get there. We'll get there. Ja? Yes? No, that's not a Bible name. That's not a Bible name. The Word is where you get that from. 1 John 5, 7. These three are one. Okay? One. There you go. Whose name is one. Holy one. Most high. Mighty God. Or Howard. Howard be thy name. Yeah. What was it the little boy said? He said he knew the, knew God's name. What was it? He said it's art. Where'd you get that from? He said, what, just what Jesus said. And, and his last name is Howard. Our Father who's art in heaven. Howard be thy name. So, uh, anything else? Very quickly. Just name, uh, biblical names of God. What God ha is either calls himself or what he was called. Hope. Creator, yes. Remember, yeah, that's a name, yes. Jehovah Jireh, we're going there. Last chance. Everett. King of Kings, there we go. We'll take that one, Lord of Lords. All right, now, he says specifically, in verse 6, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the wor world. Uh, you know, we, we, we miss one right here in John 17. Holy, holy Father. Okay, that's right here in John uh, 17. Uh, I always forget what verse it's in. Huh? 11. Yeah, and now I'm, I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. That name, it is a blasphemy to take the name of God upon yourself. That shall have no other gods before me. I am the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. And it actually says in the scriptures, whose name is Jealous, capital J. So, the reason why I bring this up is I have uh, a couple books here. I was introduced to this several years ago by a, a pastor's wife. She handed me some paperwork. And it was print out. She didn't have a computer. She didn't have the internet or anything like that. She had a copier. And she was given things that other people had given her. And she copied these things. She passed it along to me. Wanted to know what I thought about it. And it was the... And I'm, we're talking probably... I'm going to say maybe 15, 16, 17 years ago. Uh, this was first introduced to me, and the article dealt with this idea that most of Christianity has fallen way short of the doctrines of God and therefore the grace of God because they do not and they refuse to learn the name of God. God. Okay? Now, I'll ask this question. Is the name of God secret? No. No. He's, it's made known. That's what he said here. I have manifested thy name. Uh, I think there is a scripture where uh, his name is 
published, where it prophesied his name would be published. Let me look that one up. Uh, take our time here. But anyway, while this is loading up, uh, I'm reading this article. And it said that the only true way to access God is through his name. And that if you don't know his name, yeah, right here, it's the very first place the word publish, because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. To publish it means to make it public, to make it known to everybody. There are laws in this country that says that if something is published in a public forum for so many days, if you like property claims or whatever, deed claims or whatever, that if you don't take advantage of that or you don't go to try to claim that that's yours after it's been published or been made public so many days, like if you find a box of gold nuggets worth $25 million, you turn that into the county, whatever law they says, however long it has to be, and if it's published, and nobody claims it. Nobody can prove that they're the rightful claimant of that box of gold nuggets. After so much time, that belongs to you. You found it, and by law it belongs to you. Now you're $25 million richer just because you found something and somebody didn't claim it. They do that all the time with unclaimed things at the courthouse. Anyway, um, but anyway, that's the, that's the first occurrence of the word publish is that he would, to make public the name of God, so that everybody would know. So anyway, um, I was given this document, asked what I thought about it, and I looked at it, and some of the claims that it made was that the name Jesus sounds similar to, or like, like those who speak Spanish would say, Jesus, that's how they pronounce it. That sounds similar to someone saying, Hey, Zeus. Don't you laugh at them. They were serious about this. And their, their idea was that you are calling upon the name of a false god. Therefore, you cannot attain salvation. And I'm looking at this and I'm just going... You know, rule number one, there are no mistakes in the Bible. Rule number two, if I think somebody's found a mistake in the Bible, refer to rule number one. No, nope, I'm sorry, they're wrong. And I, and I left it at that. And I, and I told this pastor's wife, uh, I said, don't fall for this. It's a bunch of garbage. Um, there are certain groups who hold to this doctrine. They are called sacred name. And I have a video called sacred name or witchcraft. I think it's a two part thing. And um, when I came out with this teaching, Sacred Name or Witchcraft, I actually did a Pastor Mike Online uh, thing about it, and I accused Jim Staley, who's out of prison now. Um, he was one of these Hebrew Roots pastors, and he was getting big. He was getting a lot of views on YouTube. His church had a lot of people in it. And, and I had people that once I came out against him, I had people calling me saying, you know, we know Jim Staley. We, we were at, in the same church that he was. He was in a regular denominational church and he had problems then. Uh, one guy called me and he said, I grew up with Jim. And he said, uh, he is, he's very cocky. He's very arrogant. Um, you know how they say short man syndrome? He's not very tall. And, and the guy told me, his friend told me, he said, I grew up with him. And he said he was, he was little guy syndrome to the core. But anyway, the idea was that Staley, Staley said that God downloaded these new meanings to certain scriptures like Romans and Galatians and so on and believed a, a, with a lot of other Hebrew roots people that Jesus came to take us back to Moses to follow the commandments of God. But it's just the opposite. Moses came to drive us, to force us to the cross of Calvary to live under Christ's commandments and not Moses' commandments. Anyway, so I, I said in this video 
that Jim Staley believes this nonsense about you have to say God's name a certain way. In this particular Bible, this is a, restore, a restoration of original sacred name Bible. And in, according to this Bible, God's name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Okay? And Jesus' name is Yahshua. Now, one thing as I began to study these creeps, and they are, because they certain men crept in unawares, that makes them creeps. One thing I found out about these guys is that they can't even agree amongst themselves how to pronounce God's Hebrew name, yod heh vah -Hey, I'll show you that in a minute. They cannot agree as to how to pronounce Jesus' name in its original Hebrew form. They don't, they, they, there are, one guy started this mess, built a following, and then all of a sudden there's a schism because another guy says, you're pronouncing it wrong. So he pulls out, he's got his following, this guy's got his following. Pretty soon you've got 20 or 25 of them. They're all saying all different things. Uh, I did a thing for the Prophecy Club up in Lansing, Michigan, back around 2003. And I, because this pastor's wife had introduced this to me, I already knew what it was. Before the meeting, this guy came up to me. And I saw he had a Bible in his hand. And he shook my hand and, you know, he was real nice at first. And uh, he held this Bible out. He said, have you seen this Bible? And I didn't reach out to grab it. The Holy Ghost is like, don't do it, Mike. Mess with this guy's head. And I said, is it a King James? He said, it's based on the King James. And I said, that's not the same. That's not what I asked. Is it the King James Bible? Well, it's based on the King James. And when he opened it up, he, sh he was showing me. I said, okay, I know what it is. And I said, if that's what you believe, don't waste your time with me. Because I'm not buying this stuff. You guys are way out there. Those guys tried to sabotage that meeting toward the end. And that's the deal where they, they jumped at me and asked me about uh, Acts chapter 12 and why the word Easter was in the King James Bible. And I got them. I, I knew as soon as they brought that up, I got them. God had already prepared me for that meeting by other things that he had me studying before that time. And I was ready for it without even knowing how, how it was going to come into it. When that, by the way, kids, when they tell you, when you say, why do I need algebra? I don't never, I'm not ever going to use this in life. I promise you, you're going to use it in life. You have no idea what problems you need to solve with A plus B equals C. Amen? Well, what is A? That's my point. Okay, anyway. So, this Bible here has uh, Yah... What did I say? Yah Yahshua, instead of Jesus. Yahvah, instead of God or the Lord. Now, again, other sacred name people say it's Yahuva or... They'll say the Hebrews didn't have a V. It's a W. Yahuwah. Or Yahuwah. Or Jahuwah. Or Jahuwah. Or Yahweh. Or Yahweh. Or Jahweh. Or Jah. And it never ends. Okay? Sacred name. Uh, here's another one. Tree of Life. New, the New Covenant. And again... Uh, let's see here. Where did I? Yeah, here we go. Uh, this is Luke 23. Then the entire got up and brought Yeshua to Pilate. Now, one thing, I, and, and it says here, we found this fellow subverting our nation, forbidding payment of taxes to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Messiah, a king. Now, in the King James, the word Messiah is only mentioned twice. I think. Am I right or wrong? Am I right or wrong? Two times. What they did was they took out the word Christ. You know why they took that out? 
Christ is a Greek word. You know what the word Messiah means in Hebrew? Anointed. You know what the word Christos means in Greek? Anointed. So what's the problem? Some people speak Hebrew. Some people speak Greek. But what they did here is actually a sin. And it's, I'll be honest with you, to me it's blasphemy. They have altered the Bible. They've taken every place where they find the word Christ out and replaced it with Messiah. Simply, not because the text, the original Greek text or the original text of the New Testament says to do that. They did it because of their philosophies and their traditions. But they did it without authority. So therefore, uh, let me ask um, uh, Sister Eunice, how, how is Jesus Christ pronounced in Swahili? Yesu? Okay. Um, I know how God is pronounced. It's Mungu. Okay. So if I say Mungu and I'm in Kenya, most everybody knows what I'm talking about. If I say God here, most everybody knows what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, uh, back to this. I got to get, get back with my notes here. I'm already behind. He said, I've manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Now, the, the bottom line with this stuff is that now for 2,000 years, God has deliberately let practically everybody die and go to hell without a Savior. Simply because... The sacred name movement didn't come up until the early 1900s. So God deliberately withheld his name and the name of his son. Remember what the psalm says? What is his name and what is his son's name? That God deliberately withheld in this time where the mysteries are being revealed, that God deliberately withheld his name and his son's name away from man, so that when it says, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, no one now can be saved because we don't know the name of the Lord, because God has not revealed it to us, but these people have. But they don't get along with each other. And so now we're down to a few hundred people who actually, according to them, say it the right way, and they're the only ones who can be saved. And that's just not, that is not what Jesus said. It's not what God promised. The first, like I said, the first time he mentions the word publish, I will publish the name of the Lord. Okay? And what is that name? What is God's name? Exodus 3, verse 13. Well, one of them is, I am that I am. Now, the new Bibles, uh, this is the message. Bible. It's just a New Testament in Psalms. Uh, I thought I had an English Standard Bible. I must have left it upstairs. But anyway, the uh, book uh, Bibles like the NIV will say, I am who I am, or I am what I am. It sounds like Popeye. I am what I am. I got, 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 got. The phrase, I am that I am, is not a phrase that we're used to in English. But when you stop and think about it, I am is present tense. That I am gives it an eternal present tense meaning. I am that I am. I always have been and always will be ever present right now with you. Five minutes ago, God was with us, was he not? Five minutes from now, will God still be with us? And will he still be the same God? Or will he change five minutes from now? No, he's always the same. So these, even these new Bibles have fallen into 
this idea of where they have altered the name of God. The New King James. The New King James takes out every uh, place where Jehovah is mentioned. Set, and it's seven times in the King James. The New King James takes all seven of those out and replaces it with something else. But let me go back here. So he says, I am that I am. So you can imagine in John 8, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you before Abraham was, I am. Notice Jesus didn't say I was before Abraham was, I was because I am that I am is always meaning present tense I am right now here with you I am the same God I am that I am I am with Abraham I am with you and I am with those who are to come it's always the same amen I like it now I don't I don't know most Hebrew letters but I recognize this. They call this the Tetragrammaton. And the letters are, can you see my mouse? That, remember, he, Hebrew is read from right to left. So this letter here is a Yod. The word Yod is where we get the word Jot. Remember what Jesus said? Not one Jot. Uh, or one tittle shall in any ways pass from the law until all be fulfilled. So he was referring to this yod here. And the yod to the Hebrews has the y sound. But we're not Hebrews. We're American English speakers. And so to us, it's a j. And did God know that it would be that way? Of course he did. This is the fifth letter, hey. So we have Jod, hey. This is Vav, right here. And this is hey. Notice, there's no vowels. Jehovah has seven letters in it. The Hebrew form of it only has four letters in it. Yod, He, Va, He. Those who spoke Hebrew at the time of Moses, they automatically knew what vowels went where. It was during the... Man, I don't want to take a guess. In the past two millennium, the Jews added the different dots around the letters to denote what vowel went in there. Okay? So, the idea is that they took the vowels from Adonai and added them to the consonants of Jod, He, Vav, He to get Jehovah. Um... And that appears, Exodus 6, 3, And I appeared unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. So God now has introduced himself to Moses with a new name. Jehovah, this is my name. Psalm 83, 18, it, we find it there, that, my, that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah. Again, now think about that. Who else carries the name of Jehovah? There is, when we say Jehovah, we know who exactly who we're talking about. There is no other God anywhere named Jehovah. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah. Notice, and, and I've taught this before. Anytime you have a capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, you have the tetragrammaton, the four letters, Jod, He, Vav, He. So here you have it twice. So what the translators did was they took the name of what the name means, which is Lord, and then they spelled it out, Jehovah, 
with the vowels of Adonai. Is my strength and my song. Isaiah 26, 4. Trust ye in the Lord. So you know that in the Hebrew, it's yod Hey vah Hey, Forever, for in the Lord Jehovah. He did it again. He said, yod Hey vah Hey, yod Hey vah Hey Twice. So the translator said, well, we can't put in Lord, Lord. So we'll put in Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Then we have the Jehovah variants, I call them. We have Jehovah Jireh uh, in Genesis 22, because that means uh, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Exodus 17, 15, Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. And then we have judges. Then Gideon built an altar there under the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. What does that name mean? God is our peace. Our peace is from Jehovah, or however you want to say it. Peace comes from Jehovah. Shalom, Salem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city of peace. To the Arabs, it's Salam. Arabic and Hebrew are first cousin languages to each other. Okay, a lot of similarities. El is God in Hebrew. Al is God in Aramaic or Arabic. Under this day. Uh, it is in Oprah of the Abbey Ezra. So anyway, so seven times here. You have Jehovah, 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 Jehovah. And then you have Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. So if I were to ask you, what is God's name? You say Jehovah. Why? That's what your Bible tells you. But it, there's also something else. So the first occurrence of these four letters here. It's in Genesis 2, 4. These are the generations. If you open it, open up your Bible. Open up your Bible to Genesis 2. And underline that word Lord. And I'm teaching this as if somebody uh, doesn't, doesn't already know. Those of you who have listened to me for years, you know I've taught this many times. Every now and then I have to go back and assume that people, some people haven't heard this and they need to hear it. They need to hear it because somebody's going to lie to them and tell them they're not saying God's name right. If you ever see somebody on Facebook refer to Jesus as Yeshua, they've been deceived. And they will deceive others. Get right down to it. If you see somebody with Yahweh, I trust in Yahweh. Who is Yahweh? I have no idea. Well, they will use the variants that the Hebrews, sacred name people tells them to use. And they have been deceived and they are deceiving. So in Genesis 2, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord. Now, notice that in, in your Bible, that is in all capital letters, L-O-R-D. That always in the Old Testament tells you that these four letters were found by the translators. yod Hey vav Hey, And so they translated it as Lord. Now. Here's where we're going to get into some other people that I've made mad. Well, they made me mad first. John MacArthur is one of them. John MacArthur has gotten permission from the Dewey Lockman Foundation. The Dewey Lockman Foundation holds the copyrights to the New American Standard Bible. John MacArthur has gotten the rights to publish his own version of the New American Standard. And I've seen his commercial for it. He's already came out and pronounced that he is removing every single place in the Bible, especially the Old Testament, where it says the Lord in all capital letters. He is taking that out and replacing it with Yahweh. Now, I, I am, I'm not going to tell you he's wrong. Jesus is. 
And I'm going to show you how. How, what, and the King James translators get accused of altering the Bible over 6,000 times by not transliterating the name Yahweh the way it's supposed to be. But they're wrong. And this was like the easiest thing in the world to figure out. Okay? So... Notice in Matthew twenty-two forty-four, 44, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. Mark 12, 36, same verse, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. Luke 20, 42, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. Acts 2, 34, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. You know what I didn't do? I didn't get the, um, I didn't get the source of that. That's in the Psalms. Where is it? Does anybody know? The Lord said unto my Lord, I got to show you this. Psalm 110.1. Look at it up on the screen or look at it in your Bible. Notice that the first Lord is in all capital letters. The second Lord is in L-O-R-D. What that is, is in the Hebrew, the first occurrence of the word, the Lord, is yod heh vah -He, the four letters. After that, the word, the Lord said unto my Lord, in lowercase letters, that word, I think, is Adonai. The Lord said unto Adonai. Now, since, let me go back to this since in the Greek New Testament there are no I just I just ran over my words the New Testament does not contain any Hebrew in it in other words it wasn't written in Hebrew it was written in Greek so when they spoke or they quoted from Psalm 110, verse 1, the Lord said unto my Lord, you notice that the King James translators followed the same pattern with the two Lords. The first one's in all caps, the second one is lowercase. And they're quoting from Psalm 110. The Greek says and uses the word kyrios, for both of them, Kyrios. And that word, and I'll show you what that, there it is, Matthew 3, 3. We're going to compare Matthew 3, 3 with Isaiah 43, because that's what it's quoting. In Matthew 3, 3, for this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. Now, in the Old Testament, notice that prepare you the way of the Lord is in all, all caps, L-O-R-D, all capital letters. Which means you find the, the four letters. yod he va he And even here, this is blue letter Bible dot O-R-G. Yehovah or Jehovah. But they didn't say Yahweh or Jehovah or any Greek equivalent to that. They said the word Kyrios. Which means Lord. So here's my point in this. Who gave the words to Isaiah in Isaiah 40? Who gave those words to Isaiah in Hebrew? God did. Who gave the words to Matthew in Matthew 3 when he quoted from Isaiah 40? Who gave the, who gave the right Quotation and interpretation of it. The Holy Spirit. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So if Matthew, being directed by the Holy Spirit, used the word kyrios, meaning Lord, that means that the only proper interpretation of the yod he va he must be Lord. 
And it's in every New Testament quotation of an Old Testament verse where in the Old Testament you would find the four letters, yod heh bah he, in every occurrence in the New Testament, it's always in Greek, kyrios, kyrios, kyrios. Here, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, here's what I'm asking you. If you want to be saved, can you say, Lord, save me? Is that okay? According to these guys, it's not. But... In Joel, this is Joel in the Hebrew. Whosoever shall call on the name of the yod heh vah -Hey. So are we saying that Peter got it wrong? Or that Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, got it wrong when he wrote it down kyrios in Greek? Is that what we're saying? No. Rule number one. No mistakes in the Bible. Rule number two, somebody says there are. Rule number one, there are no mistakes in the Bible. So I'm one of these, I believe that if you call on the name of the Lord, you can be saved. Amen? It's that simple. So, when you're reading the Old Testament and you see Lord in all capital letters, is that the right interpretation Translation, whatever. Is it right? Yes. And it's right every single time. The King James translators didn't make over 6,000 mistakes. They got it right over 6,000 times. Because that's how many times it's in. It's like something over 6,000. They got it right. While most other Bibles get it wrong. Especially John Mc... I, I don't know... I'm glad I'm not John MacArthur. To go against what he should know, Greek. He knows it better than I do. I just took one year of it. To go against what he knows to be in the Greek text. To alter every Old Testament occurrence of the word Lord and change it to Yahweh. I'm glad I'm not wearing his hide.